You may think all animal nests are the same. You've seen a bird's nest and you get the gist. But as surprising as this might be to hear, some nests are truly one of a kind. These are the 20 most amazing nests in the animal world. Number 20. Weaver's Nest How perfect that the first animal, and especially the first bird, is one that's literally called the weaver, because that's what it is. A weaver, or weaver bird should you want, is a type of bird that actually has over 100 species of itself out there in the world, and their name is very apt because they're known to make some incredibly intricate nests no matter where they are. Home building is done exclusively by the males hoping to attract a female. Depending on the species and available building materials, nests may be constructed with plant fibers or twigs, and in a pinch, the resourceful weaver bird will also use string or twine. Grasses are often preferred for their pliability and reliable abundance. One nest requires about a thousand strands. Unless you think they have a singular design, they honestly don't. They can make it big or long or round. Depending on where they are in regards to making the nest, and as stated, the materials that they use to make them. Now once everything is wrapped up, the male weaver then lets the ladies know that his pad is ready. And he's not the only bird to make his own bachelor pad. It's then up to a female to swoop in, literally at times, to see if it's to her liking. And if it is, there will be eggs laid within a few days. But wait, there's another twist. Given that the weaver males are the ones making the nests, you'd expect that a lot of them would be getting female weavers and then making babies, right? Well, wrong, because the BBC of all places says that most male weavers never ever become parents. A rather morbid life they must live, if that is indeed the case. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. The Rufus Hornero are a gorgeously unique bird, and their nests are equally as gorgeous as they are. So what's so odd about their nests? Well, here's the thing, they're technically a sort of incubation chamber. They're large and oven-like and built from mud rather than things like twigs and branches, and they almost look like a Tatooine home from Star Wars. As always, comment down below using the hashtag sweet topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed you on the screen. Number 19. Woodpeckers You might think that because of their woodpecking nature that you know how the woodpecker mates, and to an extent you'd be right. But as in all things, it's a bit more nuanced than that. Certain species of woodpeckers breed in deciduous woodlands with oak or beech groves of dead and drying trees, river bottoms, burned out areas, recent clearings, beaver swamps, orchards, parks, farmlands, grasslands, and scattered trees, forest edges, and roadsides. So yeah, they do get around, which could be why they last so long. But in truth, the dedicated woodpecker indeed does go and carve out a hole in a tree so that they can lay their eggs. The size of the place honestly depends on the woodpecker itself and the amount of eggs they're going to be hatching. So their nest holes, as they're known, can honestly be quite small depending upon the species. What's more, they don't just go into the tree, they go deep into the tree, all to protect themselves and their eggs from predators. The chamber of a tiny, downy woodpecker descends about a foot from the opening, while the pelated woodpecker may chip out a chamber that's two feet deep. Both are beyond the reach of a pesky raccoon. And that's why this nest is so impressive, because not only does it house the woodpeckers, but it also allows them to stay safe as the young ones grow. Number 18. Bees nests. Typically, you do refer to it as a beehive, but it's also known as a nest of bees, just like you would say a wasp's nest or something of that like. 
It doesn't really matter how you say it, as long as you be careful and behave. I'll be moving on now. Anyways, even if they weren't called nests by many, beehives are still rather impressive feats of engineering, because just think about it. They have to house an entire army of bees that do various jobs and such, and then they need to be able to ensure that the hive is both protected and the queen is well taken care of. And that's not even talking about the food side of things, as that's a whole different layer. Beehives are made of six-sided tubes shaped for optimal and efficient honey production, and as such, beehives require less wax and can hold more honey. Bees are said to be brilliant mathematicians due to how they know how to build their hives to be optimal and efficient, and as well as how they work together to get it all accomplished. And of course, if their hive is attacked, they'll happily go and defend it with their lives. What's more, sometimes these beehives can be truly massive, well over a few feet in height. That's why this is one nest that you absolutely don't want to mess with, because if you do, well, it was nice knowing you. Number 17. Weaver Ant Nest Yes, we have another creature that's called the weaver. This time, though, I'm talking not about a bird. However, I'm talking about an ant. Now, you might be thinking that I'm talking about the ants that go and make those massive colonies in the ground, some of which can be built up to the size of humans, but this time I'm not because the weaver ant is one that has a much different way of living. It does not make its home in the dirt. It makes it by taking leaves and literally weaving them together. In fact, the ants work alongside one another to ensure that they weave the leaves just right so that they can make their homes. And don't forget, these are the small ants. So compared to them, the leaves would be like a human trying to lift a massive piece of plywood on their own. It's a rather large size difference. The ants use larva silk to glue the leaves together and gather food for the hungry workers so that the work can be done as quickly and efficiently as possible. A novel concept, making sure everyone is good as the building goes on. Again, this is a much different path than most ant species take, and that's why you have to appreciate their nest because it's a truly uh, we're doing this together kind of deal. And when that's the case, everyone benefits once the work is done. Number 16. Taylor Bird Nest Heading back to the world of birds, we'll take a look at another one that's willing to make its nest out of what's available, while also getting pretty creative in terms of how to go about getting it done. The small common tailor bird sews a sturdy bird nest together from leaves and spider webs, along with fine grass and plant fibers. As you can see, the tailor bird does get pretty hands-on, making sure that her nest is perfectly sewn together so that she can raise the young that are coming. The tailor bird was so special in how it made its nest, that it was put into a special jungle book of its own. An excerpt from that detailing the nest says that the nest is a deep cup lined with soft materials and placed in thick foliage. The leaves holding the nest have the upper surfaces outwards to make it difficult to spot. The punctures made on the edge of the leaves are minute and do not cause browning of the leaves, which further aids in camouflage. In some cases, the nest is made from a single large leaf, the margins of which are riveted together, and sometimes the fibers from one rivet can extend into an adjoining puncture and appear more like sewing. The stitch is made by piercing two leaves and drawing fiber through them, and the fibers fluff out on the outside, and in effect they are more like rivets in the end. There are many variations in the nest, and some may altogether lack the cradle of leaves. All in all, it sounds like a really clever bird, wouldn't you say? Number 15. Swallow Nest now, you'd be forgiven for not having an immediate picture of what a swallow nest looks like. A part of the reason for that is because the very nature of the bird itself. And what I mean is that the swallow is a species of bird that's known specifically for being in the sky most of its life. So thus, its true home is the skies above and not a tangible nest. However, even these birds have come down to rest every once in a while, especially when it comes to laying their eggs. So, so 
what do they do when that happens? Well, it's simple. They look around and take what they can and use what's there. Case in point, there are certain types of swallows that are more than happy to reside in the former nest of woodpeckers. After all, the hole is already dug out, so why not just use it since it's not occupied? Furthermore, humans have been known to make nests via boxes of all things. For the swallows and such, it's kind of like the purple martin is known to live in these boxes wherever they can find them. There are even kinds of swallows that live in the dirt or off the edge of cliffs, and clearly this is a bird that doesn't mind getting around or living in virtually any scenario so long as it's safe. And in a way, it makes it the most versatile bird out there, because it's not about making things, it's just about making things work. Number 14. Ruby-throated hummingbird nest. Now I've shown you a lot of nests so far that work on the principle of basic function and protection, but with the ruby-throated hummingbird, I'm taking this one to the next level. Because it's entirely possible that in an area that they live in, you could be right next to one of these nests and yet not know about it. But why? Well, because they're very well hidden by design. Because what many of these birds will do is hide their nests in key locations on a tree in order to ensure that they aren't easily spotted, such as how some will use leaves and lichens to keep them out of sight, or how some will build their nests 60 feet off the ground to ensure that certain predators will immediately be out of range of messing with the eggs. Some of the western U.S. hummingbirds build frequently in the openings on fence rails, porch lights, and other human-made objects, so it's clearly not a one-size-fits-all scenario for these hummingbirds. But for the ruby-throated hummingbird, they do want to ensure their offspring's safety, so with their small size and their camouflage, you can see why they're hard to find, as well as hard to get to. In fact, if you look at certain tip guides on how to find the nests, their best advice is to to go and find a female ruby-throated hummingbird and just follow her back to it, because obviously they know where to go, and thus it's a quick path to the target, if you will. Number 13. Edible Nest Swiftlet now, I wonder what makes this particular bird so special. Might take me a while to figure it out based on its name alone. Regardless, you can find the edible nest swiftlet in places like Andaman, where the edible nest swiftlet is known to reside in its caves. Nesting deep within the caves and poorly lit areas, the swiftlets use echolocation for navigation with sound waves as they bounce them off the surface. The swiftlets tend to choose their nesting location primarily to escape their natural predators. Again, a very clever tactic, all in order to gain what they need. And you honestly don't hear of birds in echolocation. You usually think of bats using this technique, but clearly the birds do it as well. As for the nests, yes, they are edible, but no, not in regards to the bird eating them, though that would honestly work if they wanted it to. However, people eat them. Yes, for real. People will actually go to find these nests and then consume them. But why? Well, they claim, number one, that it's tasty, but obviously everyone has different tastes, so we'll let that one go. Apparently, they are so delicious and rare that they've become a delicacy in places like China, and thus people will find these nests and then sell them for thousands of dollars. Oh, and did I mention that these nests are made by the Swiftlet's saliva? Because they absolutely are. Yes, people are paying thousands of dollars for these nests to be made into a soup that's made out of bird spit because they have chosen it as a delicacy. What's that phrase from Las Vegas? A sucker's born every minute? Well, you just have to believe it with this one. Number 12. European Bee Eater now there's a name that's going to strike fear into the hearts of insects all over the world, or at least 
the bee population, which is rather large to be frank. These bee eaters are gregarious, nesting colonially in sandy banks, preferably near river shores and usually at the beginning of May. They make a relatively long tunnel in which they lay five to eight spherical white eggs around the beginning of June, and both the male and female will care for these eggs, which they brood on for about three weeks. They also feed and roost communally, and as you can see, the birds are very special in and of themselves because they're not exactly typical in terms of their nests. Furthermore, this style of nesting is hindering at times because of the fact that they need to have the right kind of soil to ensure that their nests are proper and won't bring them harm. You tend not to think of this kind of specificity with birds, but sometimes the species like a certain way of living, and thus they'll go and do what they need to do in order to live. As the name would suggest, bee eaters predominantly eat insects, especially bees, wasps, and hornets, and they catch them in flight in sorties from an open perch. Before eating a bee, the European bee eater removes the stinger by repeatedly hitting the insect on a hard surface, and it can actually eat around 250 bees per day. That's a whole lot of bees. Can I note that? That is a whole lot of bees in one day. Talk about a healthy appetite. Number 11. Caddisflies Next up we have the caddisflies, and if you don't know, this is a species of aquatic insect, and rather numerous one at that. Over 7,000 caddisflies are in the world today, and you'll find 1,300 of them just in North America alone. And since there are apparently that many of them, you'd be fair in thinking that there are plenty of potential habitats for them to reside in. But like in many animal cycles, it depends on where they are in life. For example, these species are grown in bulk, like 800 eggs per female, in a jelly, and then the mother will spin protective tubes around her larva that are made of things like branches and twigs and other things to ensure safety. Then these shells will be put in places where the young won't be disturbed very easily. As they grow into maturity, they'll find their homes as best they can based on their surroundings. And don't forget, these are insects that are found all over the world. Due to the specific habitat preferences of different species, many of them can coexist in a single stream or river, which is obviously something that not all animals of the same species are willing to do. All in all though, it's clear that the caddisflies are willing to make their nests and lay their eggs wherever possible, and thus, they can be all over the world as it doesn't bother them to live in different terrains and climates. Number 10. Vogelkop Bowerbird Nest Now it's very likely that you've heard of the famous and somewhat infamous bird known as the bowerbird. That's because this is a species of bird that's known for going all out for its home, but not because of itself, not technically anyways. Rather, it'll build up an elaborate pad for a potential mate. And when it comes to the Vogelkop Bowerbird nest, these are the largest and most elaborate of the lot. This most extraordinary structure is a cone-shaped hut-like bower, 100 centimeters high and 160 centimeters in diameter, with an entrance that's usually propped up by two column-like sticks. A front lawn of some square meters area is cleaned of debris and then laid out with moss. Then, to make sure that his pad is exceptional, he'll go and scavenge around the area, try to find the best things possible to lure in a potential mate. Now I'm talking about things like special rocks and flowers and colorful items and so on, all so that they can be attracted to him via his home. As if all of that isn't enough, the males are almost OCD in how their pads look, and if there's a neighboring Vogelkop bowerbird nest, it'll go full male and make sure that theirs is way better than the other guys. And while it does make them a bit materialistic, the ladies will indeed come and judge the male on not only his pad, but the items that he used to lure her in with. And if she doesn't like the place, she's out of there. Clearly, it's a hard knock life for the Vogelkop bowerbird. Bird. Number 9. Termite Nests 
Now, wait, you say, don't termites live in mounds? Well, yes and no. There are species of termites that, like ants, will live in mounds. However, in places like the United States, those species don't reside there, and as such, you're more likely to find termite nests near your home, and it's those nests that make termites so dangerous to homeowners. The nests may be located between 4 to 18 inches or more underground and are made up of several rooms called galleries. These galleries are connected by tunnels that are made of mud, and the tunnels not only connect the galleries, but also connect the termites to food sources. So much like ants, they're rather meticulous in how they build their homes and ensure that they have access to everything they need. What's more, as you likely have guessed, they're not afraid to expand their reach and even spread out over an acre in order to forage for things that they desire. And this again is why people hate termites, you usually won't find their nests until it's far too late. Number 8. Montezuma Ora Pendula Nest Oh, are you expecting me to make a Montezuma's Revenge joke? Well, I thought about it, but that joke was kind of crappy. Getting back to the animals, the Montezuma Ora Pendula is one of the most famous birds of Costa Rica. But why is that? Well, it's in part to their nests, but also because of the sounds that they make when they call out. A melodic warble, this bird song contains conversational gurgles and bubbles and is a key element to the species' mating ritual, not unlike many other bird species that try to bring in potential mates. Montezuma ora pendulas nest in large colonies where a selected tree is festooned with intricately woven pendulous structures. This is very atypical from most bird species which don't like to share the same tree, let alone doing it with a bunch of other birds. It just goes to show that this bird is special in a whole lot of ways. Number 7. African Jacana the African jacana is another bird that uses its environment well in regards to making its nest, mainly because the African jacana lives on freshwater spots in Africa. But what really sets it apart is that the male makes the nest on floating islands that happen to be in deep parts of the water. Then he'll use that island to do a mating ritual in which they circle the island and then, well, let's just say that it gets a little bit weird and we'll leave it at that. The point here is that this is a very interesting bird and how it uses its home is very special, not the least of which is because its long legs allow it to go from spot to spot in these freshwater areas. What's more, the female doesn't always lay her eggs on the nest, she'll sometimes lay it around the nest or in the nearby vegetation. Number 6. Molly Fowl Nest now there's an interesting name for a bird. After all, birds are already foul. But sure, why not put it in the name so people don't forget? Ah, such progress. The molly fowl is a stocky ground-dwelling Australian bird about the size of a domestic chicken, to which it is distantly related. Who would have thought? It's notable for its large nesting mounds that are constructed by the males and its lack of parental care after the chicks hatch. So they're clearly not the loving and nurturing type, but more of the I built you a place to live and good luck type. Another atypical element to them is that they don't usually fly in terms of constantly doing it, they prefer to walk around even when they're getting chased by predators. But hey, whatever works, right? They also use a variety of sounds to communicate with each other and draw each other in to mate. Number 5. Hammer Cop Nest Next up is a particular tale about a hammer cop that's meant to be a bit surprising. You see, usually these birds make their nests on the water that they live around or in the dead trees that happen to occupy those waters. But once upon a time, a bird watcher of sorts noticed a hammer cop consistently getting new materials for a nest every day in his area, despite there not being a clear body of water for it to nest in. As it turns out, it was making a nest in a tree on the side of the road. One that was in a very lively tree and allowed the bird to spread its nest out while also ensuring that it was safe from predators. The nest for the hammer cop typically has walls, a roof, and a tunnel plastered with mud leading to a sheltered inner chamber where the female lays her eggs. But this one had a different idea on that front. 
And to that we say thanks for keeping it fresh, Mighty Hammer Cop. Number 4. Little Greb Nest the Little Greb, not to be confused with Little Debbie, is a small yet unmistakable bird when you see it, mainly because of its coloring and where it likes to live, in the waters of freshwater lakes and other such spots. In fact, these birds are rather famous for making homes amongst small colonies of their kind, and like all grebs, it nests in the water's edge, since its legs are set very far back and it cannot walk well. Usually four to seven eggs are laid, and when the adult bird leaves the nest, it usually takes care to cover the eggs with weeds. This will make it less likely to be detected by predators. Once the eggs hatch, they're good to go for swimming on their own. However, they do at times ferry around by their parents should they need to. Oh, what a touching bird moment. It's good to know that some families of birds will take care of one another. Number 3. Paper Wasps Oh, how I wish that these were wasps that were actually made of paper and didn't have the chance to harm me, because that would make life so much easier. Or in the least, in this very specific case it would, but it's not the case at all. Instead, these are wasps that are apparently very good at making their homes. In fact, they form their nests from pulp that they make out of wood fibers and plants. And they're often called umbrella wasps due to the look of their nest. Inside the nests are several compartments that are used for housing wasp eggs and larvae as they grow and develop. They're usually hanging from areas like the eaves of your home, door frames, or windows. Intricately made, these nests will have fragile cones that are formed together in a shape that I've described before. Now, to be fair, these aren't the most aggressive wasps around, but they are wasps after all, and so they'll sting you if you get too close. Don't say that you haven't been warned. Number 2. The Red Oven Bird Just so you know, I'm finishing up with two birds, and the Red Oven Bird is one that is very much known for construction. And if you're wondering why they're called oven birds, well, it's because their home is shaped like a small oven. They're also quite versatile in terms of where they put their oven homes, because they'll do it in nature or in the city should they need to. Their homes are made of clay, and in fact, they make them during the rainy season to ensure that the clay is wet enough to mold. Aside from that, their nesting habits are a bit of a mystery, as they're too fragile to do a deep dive into them. But the other reason for it being an oven bird is that like other bird species with similar home styles, the nest allows them to incubate their eggs without having to constantly be there. Number 1. American Robin Bird Nest While most bird species build nests on their own or try and incite a mating ritual, the American Robin is one where the male and female work together to make their nest. In this case, the male robin brings the materials to the female and then she will construct the nest on site. She uses mud for the foundation, putting grass and other materials in to help fortify it, so that when they lay their precious blue eggs, they're well taken care of. It can sometimes take a week to build the nest, so it's quite a process, and they also make sure that they have a proper spot to ensure that they're good from both predators and the elements themselves, but when it's done, it's a cozy little home. That's all from the realm of really interesting animal nests. Were you surprised by the design or logic behind some of the ones that I showed you? And did you forget that it's not just birds who make nests, but other animals as well? Which one did you find the most impressive? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.